Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Gaming to the Com video, we're going to be discussing a smorgasbord of tech news which has popped up as usual over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD because we're going to be discussing Threadripper, and this includes the release date, information on the motherboards themselves. We actually have some images, and then moving over to that very distant star known as RX Vega because we have yet more eyewitness testimony on people who have actually used it. So we're going to be discussing that and I want your feedback on that particular topic as well. And then we're going to finalize the video with the i9-7920X. Specifically, we're going to discuss the specifications. So first things first, some pictures of, <laughs> believe it or not, of the Ryzen Threadripper packaging have emerged from the internet. And this is actually from AMD themselves. Lisa Sue is actually holding it. I have to say, the packaging, you can't argue that AMD are going with a premium packaging. That is not just a simple cardboard box by any stretch of the imagination. It looks really cool. I'm not saying that you would buy, you know, the processor specifically for the packaging. But if you bought the packaging, it's much nicer than like a basic OEM box. Let's just put it that way. However, um, you're going to say to yourself, well, okay, that's nice, but I kind of want to actually, you know, use the product. So when can I actually get that? Well, this is according to um, a Japanese website, Hermitage Akihabara, probably pronouncing that incorrectly. They have said that according to their sources, um, the pre-order date is no longer going to be July the 27th. And this is because of Fred Ripper availability. They're concerned with it. They don't feel they're going to have the numbers in time. Uh, they don't want uh, low quantities, although to be fair, I don't feel that the extra few days, which, you know, it's basically just a couple of extra weeks, is really going to make that much difference. The reason I'm telling you all this is because there's a good chance that this product might be hard to get hold of. And so in theory, and I'm not saying this is the case, I'm just warning you ahead of time, if you're going to wait for reviews, you might then have to wait for a couple more weeks to get the product. But I'm not telling you to pre-order just on hearsay, because I also don't want you to buy it and then find out there's platform problems. So that's down to you, whether you you know want to pre-order and possibly wait a couple of weeks or not. It's possible there will be no delays at all, but obviously at this point, we just don't know. Anyway, according to them, the Fred Ripper launch will actually take place now on August the 10th at 10 p.m. Japanese time, which means it's going to be around 6 LA time. So that's not too bad at all, really. I mean, it's not only a few days, it's only a couple of weeks difference. So if you, you know, want to save your pennies for a few more uh, weeks, then you've got that time to do so. Now, uh, there are some images of the motherboard itself, and uh, to be honest with you, I think it looks rather lovely. These have actually popped up, as a lot of stuff tends to do, to be fair, from chiphell.com. I won't describe the motherboard. I think you can see what it looks like yourself. This is from the Asus X399 ROG Zenith Extreme. Um, I just think this board looks rather beautiful. The thing that really, really just always strikes me about the Fred Ripper range of boards, and I'm pretty sure you can probably guess what I'm going to say before I even say it, it's just the sheer size of the bloody socket. I mean, holy crap. It's essentially the same length as a PC... Uh, I'm sorry, not a PCIe slot, as a RAM slot. It's basically that size. That is it. That, it the thing's just immense. So, yeah. It does look rather cool, though, and there is, like, a really geeky part of me that, for some reason, really likes the size of the socket. I have no idea why. But you can kind of see, and I'm not saying Intel were right, but on very face value, it literally looks like you've got to stick, like, two standard uh, Ryzen CPUs next to each other. It almost looks like you could do that. It's, it's, just, it's just immense. It's pretty cool, though. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of grinning. Okay, so I guess we're going to be tackling Vega again. We can't seem to stay away from this topic, can we? So, as you know, on July the 18th, there was an event in Budapest, Hungary, and basically gamers got to try out Vega, essentially. Um, the setup was pretty simple. You had a Vega system with a, well, NVIDIA system. Now, what the NVIDIA system was, I don't know, because... There were some reports it was a GTX 1080, others felt it was a GTX 1070. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, obviously, you just ask AMD. No, they said nothing about what the card is. And I kind of don't like that. I think they should at least give us a ballpark figure, but it is what it is. There was no frame rate counter, and this setup is almost identical for the Portland USA 
PDX LAN event, which took place a few days ago, which was on July the 21st to 23rd. So at this particular event, the PDX LAN event, there was still the same speculation whether it's the GTX 1070 or 1080. Thai, AMD have not confirmed this, but we can probably guess it's a 1080. So we still see the curved monitors that you've seen previously. Uh, these are FreeSync and G-Sync monitors, as you would expect. And once again, the resolution was uh, 3440 by 1440 with an uncapped frame rate. So here's where things get a bit weird. So, according to a video which was taken at the event, Vector, who is the administrator of PDX LAN, was deciding to discuss the differences on pricing and FreeSync and G-Sync, and he showed a couple of different monitors. One was from Asus, which was a G-Sync monitor, one from Asus, which was, you guessed it, a FreeSync monitor. Now, I won't read out all the specifications, but they were essentially the same monitor, the difference here, not the resolution, but just the technology, whether it's free or the G-Sync. And basically, you are looking at a monitor which is 500 US dollars versus not 949.95 US dollars, which is obviously quite a bit of pricing difference. But the curiosities continue. During this event, AMD were basically asking people to vote. And the votes were then basically calculated and there were three specific uh, outcomes. The first is people who preferred one system, the second is people who preferred the other system, and people who said that they didn't have a preference. Essentially, both systems were identical. Now, don't forget, previously, AMD have said that there was about a $300 pricing difference. This was at the previous event, just to clarify, the one in Budapest, a $300 pricing difference between the NVIDIA system and the AMD system. Now, that gets kind of blown out the water if they're talking about this pricing difference on the monitors. And I actually feel this is confusing the matter more. And to be honest, and this is my own personal opinion, I've used a FreeSync monitor and I have no problems with them. I think they're a really nice tech. I think it's a really nice technology. It's really good. And honestly, if you're shipping, ship, um, shopping around, not shipping around, shopping around for a PC monitor and you already have an AMD graphics card or you're planning to buy, buy Vega or whatever, then I would advise you at the very least to suggest, uh, you know, try out a FreeSync monitor. I would advise you to at least consider it because honestly, there is a distinct difference. However, I do have an issue with them factoring that into the system's price. The reason behind this is because, especially in these type of events, it muddies the water in terms of like value proposition, especially for gamers or people who don't know so much. Like I imagine most of the audience watching this channel, you can probably figure this stuff out like because I have very in-depth conversations with people who write to me on Facebook or even email seriously I mean I've talked about server stuff like graphics scenarios frame rate testing god knows what else with some viewers so I know that a lot of you do know your stuff so I don't think that this is probably confusing to you but to a lot of people it may be the other problem I have with this is that then what are you going to do if that person doesn't want to buy a monitor or is already invested for example, with that logic, let's say you already own, I'm just giving an example, a GTX 1060. With that logic, if you've bought, like, let's say a FreeSync monitor, uh, sorry, a G-Sync monitor back in the day, does that mean that now you are paying more money for an AMD card? Because if you want to buy that monitor, uh, it even gets even worse, because what about if your graphics card requires a more powerful PSU? Like, what do graphics card manufacturers now start bringing gpu pricing in combined with the cost of monitors and power supplies now you might say i'm being a bit silly and i admit i am a bit but that's kind of the thing like just i think we want to know the value proposition like if you were to say this system costs a hundred dollars less than the average nvidia system just with the graphics card you know just in the box cool I think everyone will be absolutely really happy with that. But otherwise, I think it just kind of muddies the message and it can set things up for disappointment, especially if the pricing difference for Vega turns out to be essentially identical to the cheaper model GTX 1080s. And that's also the, the problem I've got with this whole scenario as well, is like, how much room did NVIDIA have to knock down the price of the 1080? 
One area that definitely both companies are feeling the pinch in is the price of RAM at the moment. But because mining isn't quite so profitable now, uh, with Ethereum and all the other you know currencies becoming a lot harder to mine for, or just people jumping out, selling their graphics cards on eBay, you know the story. It's possible that RAM prices are going to start to diminish a bit, but you know as well as I do that demand and price fluctuations don't happen in kind. Like, it takes longer for things to go down in price than what they do to go up in price, generally. Uh, oil is the same thing, and petrol, or gasoline if you prefer, same thing. And, you know, memory, that type of jazz also takes longer to go down in price. So... NVIDIA might not have super amounts of space to move down their pricing, but they possibly could, especially if they already have a pretty good inventory of uh, technology. And to be honest, considering now that you've got all of these custom cards, uh, it's possible that they might be able to sell the lower bin GTX 1080s, the ones that just about run at stock. They could possibly sell those, and it, it it's just going to be kind of weird. So I'm not coming across as negative for AMD, because quite frankly, I really want Vega to do well. Uh, my dream scenario is that it's 10 to 20 percent faster than a stock i repeat stock 1080 the ideal even would be even to compete with the, the the ti the tie i would love for that because then that's great for us as gamers but my concern primarily is that amd aren't being too boastful like if you look at their body language of the, when people are on stage or just the the verbiage they use when they were talking about, let's say, Threadripper or Ryzen, they were a lot more boastful. They were actually showing off the performance scores, for example. And one can actually say, yes, with Ryzen, they didn't always show the single thread performance, and I do hold my hand up for that. I did notice that. But with Vega, they're being a bit more tentative. They're being a bit more cautious. So, I don't know. I'm just going to wait and see. Let's see what the drivers can do. Uh, I would, as always, with any product, I don't care what it is, whether it's a bloody toothbrush or whether it's, you know, a, a $500 graphics card, don't pre-order things until you've used them. Oh, sorry, until, uh, until other people have used them, like reviewers or whatever. And then you can kind of get an idea of whether they're worth the cash or not. Right, I guess the logical thing to finish the video, speaking of uh, rivals, because we already discussed NVIDIA and AMD, I guess, kind of as a rivalry. Well, now let's bring up the i9-7920X. I won't go through the spiel, but it's a HEDT part, we all know that, and of course it is on the X299 platform. PLPC have managed to grab a CPU Z image of this particular processor, and well, it tells us a lot of information. First of all, obviously, once again, 12 cores, 24 threads, and has a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz with a boost frequency of 4. I have to say, that is pretty aggressive. I can assume that not all cores are going to be running at 4 GHz. I'm going to say that that's probably, you know, just a couple of cores running at that speed. Most likely, it's going to be like just when the Turbo Max is being used, so it might be about 3.8, at a guess, 3.9, 3.8, for when, you know, all cores are being hammered. 16.5 megabytes of level 3 cache, 12 megabytes of level 2 cache, for those who don't no, there is one megabyte of level two cache per core with the um, with the uh, Skylake X architecture. They basically did a major redistribution, and that's why we see smaller level three cache. Honestly, this processor is looking quite nice. So I'm I'm actually very impressed, and I will give you a quick indication that I really like the i9 7900X. I'm not saying it's the worth the money for everyone without a question in my mind like that process is very expensive especially when let's say the 1920x in the thread ripper lineup is going to cost about 800 us dollars so there is definitely a bit of a, a bit of an owie there considering but i think for folks really pushing single thread performance or who need avx 512 and there are some people who do need that uh, especially in the uh, more professional environments or if you need single thread performance for let's say gaming let's say that is a concern or plum you need like intel optane or you've bought into that technology and you kind of want to migrate your stuff over then definitely the i9 is a very good buy i'm going to be very curious to see how it stacks up against thread ripper i think i'm going to be getting the thread ripper board as well to test so i'm very 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 excited with that 
With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the bit of a bitsy video. I'm going to get going because I've got to do an awful lot of editing um, over the next, well, you know, couple of days. I will be around uh, for people who are wondering on my slow responses on Facebook. I am there. It's just taking me a while to get back to you. I really apologize. It's just I'm trying to, you know, edit a lot of stuff at the moment. So, yeah. Uh, this video <laughs> review, he says, clicking on Adobe Premiere. It's like 20 minutes almost of uh, me talking and I'm on the camera a lot more as well so I'm trying to clean up the audio a bit. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. No more stuff. If you are new to the channel, feel free to, you know, click the subscribe button, but I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.